Hello folks, this is Vector Tiles Part 3 and we are going to style some stuff. In the first screencast we talked about what Vector Tiles are and the awesome OSM to Vector Tiles project. Now you can get a hold of those OSM Vector Tiles and serve them out on your own server. In the second screencast we talked about how to take your own data and transform that into Vector Tiles either cached or on the fly. And in this one, we're going to round it out with styling and be done with vector tiles altogether. A vector tile is just vector data. No styling information comes with that vector tile. How you would style it would depend entirely on the client you're using. Like if you had a vectors as a shape file or a GeoJSON file, and you pull that up in QGIS, how you style it there would be different from how you style it in ArcGIS Desktop, which would be different from how you style it in GeoServer, which would be different from how you style it in Cardo CSS in TileMill. Every client will style those vectors differently. So we are primarily going to focus on the Mapbox GL style spec for the Mapbox GL client. But let's take a look at a couple others to begin with. Let's see. You can put vector tiles in a leaflet map. There's a Mapbox vector tile extension. Works very well. You can see it does. Like here we're looking at vector tiles sitting on top of a raster uh, or a, a image base map. Because they're vector tiles, you can do vectory kind of things in the leaflet like a, you know, a selection. How you style it here is very JavaScripty. Every type of feature, point, line, polygon, comes as a particular case, and then you can set different basic styling attributes of it. It's fairly basic. Open layers as well can do uh, vector tiles. And here, open layers is doing an entire base map from vector tiles. Now you notice here we're not seeing street labels. The labeling engine used here I don't think is uh, quite as nice as say Mapbox GLs. So you don't get things like roads running along curves and streets and so forth. We're just doing a few labels. Now this is Let's see here, a whole bunch of JavaScript doing this. You're setting fills and strokes and very SVG looking sort of stuff. And just goes on and on and on. So you can do a base map with open layers. I don't know that you really want to. Yeah, zoom this back out. Uh, for these two clients, I think vector tiles are probably better used as, say, an overlay. Say you have raster base tiles and you want to put like your floodplains from a vector tile on top of it. Might make a little more sense. Uh, the leaflet extension for sure, and I think open layers render these on a 2D canvas and not a a 3D canvas or a Web, WebGL canvas. So it's a little bit different, therefore it may not be as likely to be GPU accelerated. But you can do it. So different clients might have extensions for vector tiles, but how they will style it would be very different and it would depend on the client. So how does Mapbox GL do it? They have a JSON file laid out in a particular way that does the styling. And it's, uh, I've got somewhere here, like here's an example. There's really only a couple components to it. Uh, version and name, and note that the GL style spec changes. I think the current one is version 8, 
and like version 7 and version 8 of the GL style are a little bit different. If you send a version 8 GL spec through a or a version 7 through a version 8 validator, it might throw up on you. So they're a little bit different. But I'll have a version and a name and your sources, where you're getting tiles from, and your sprite and your glyphs. And then it's mostly just a layers section with all of your layers and the various styling. Like water, type, fill, where the source and source layer are, what you want to paint there. Oh. And that's kind of what the layout is. Now before we get in actually styling it, note there's two things you have to think about here. There's the sprites and there's the glyphs. And when you see glyphs, think fonts. A 3D canvas or WebGL doesn't know what a font is. You can't just go canvas, draw, hello world. It doesn't know what that is. So every little bit of a font, all the curves and the letters C and so forth, are drawn through glyphs and that's how they're drawn. So you can't just take a true type font and go, go. You have to transform the fonts into uh, essentially protobufs and those are going to get loaded and that will draw the actual text for you. A sprite is just what you think of a sprite normal web development. It is a single image that has lots of littler images and you use a CSS file or a JSON file to tell you uh, this particular image is from pixel, this pixel to that pixel on this one big image. And the sprites are generated from a folder full of SVGs. And the SVG names became the, become the name to reference for that particular image. So you have to process this stuff out. So what I did Tom McWright, genius. I just want to walk around with his brain for like half an hour to feel what it's like to be smart. He made a Mapbox GL code flow example, which is just how you could set up a live reload server and edit a Mapbox GL style and see it changed on the map and interactively do that. So I took that example and made my own and it's a bit different in a couple ways. First, it processes fonts uh, for you. So you'll have a folder with your true type fonts you're using in your style file, and it'll automatically convert those to protobufs. And that's using uh, Stefan's GenFont GL. Big thanks to him. He's been very patient taking my pull requests when I was changing different stuff to, to make this. And it's also using Sprite Zero to convert a folder full of SVGs to your sprites. Now how that looks like in this GL editor is there's a styles folder and these are four different styles. If you look in bright, there's your Mapbox GL JSON for the actual style and the true type fonts we're using, which is various versions of Open Sans and a folder of all the SVGs for our sprite. Now when we run this, it converts those, converts our fonts into these protobufs. And I gotta tell you, I don't know what any of this crap is. Like, I know what they are. Basically, it's just so you can draw these fonts, but 9216-94, I have no idea what the hell that means, but you need that. So it processes the fonts and it also uses Sprite uh, Sprite Zero to make your sprite files. And Sprite 2 and Sprite2.png are just for retina displays. So let's run this sucker and see exactly how it works. We'll go on over here and we're just gonna go gulp style equals, and it's the name of one of your style folders. We'll just say bright. It's going to convert the fonts and make your sprites on the fly. It does that very quickly. And you see over here, it has drawn our stuff. So we can go 
be bopping around. Down, down. You can change stuff in your style file. Uh, make sure this is bright. Yes, yeah, is bright. We can go up and say, uh, bu, bu. change the background color from that kind of off white to badass green. It's going to see that change. It's going to re render the map. And now we got badass green, which is quite ugly. So let's change that back. We can do whatever we want here. We can change, when we change stuff, when we hit save, it does two things. It does a validation through the GL style spec to make sure we've got a valid style file, and then it changes the map. So if we did something dumb, like even ES Lint here is gonna yell at me for this and hit save, it'll come over here and say, hey, you've got bad crap here. You need to fix that. If you did something like instead of a fill color here, we said, hi mom. It's gonna yell at us and say expected a color and it got hi mom over here. So it's doing validation for you and it's doing that via the Metbox GL style spec library. And this is how you can edit a style file just interactively on the fly. You can pull it up and you can just start editing. Now, the hard truth slash bad news, this isn't exactly easy. The style spec is fairly long. Fairly long. And the JSON style file, like this is for OSM Bright is like 3,000 lines long. So if you are going to make a style from scratch, say I want to see the world is nothing but gray goo and just make everything from the top to the bottom, this would be a hard way to do it. This is much better for taking an existing style and fiddling with it and adding stuff, maybe adding another source so you can see some additional information it's good for that. For other stuff, eh, making something from scratch, this is quite a lot of work. The Mapbox Studio Online is a great tool for making styles from scratch. And you can make a style from scratch there and uh, download it from there. Now, to use that style from Mapbox Studio for your OSM to vector tiles tiles, you'll have to monkey with it a bit. The version seven, I think, of streets that OSM or, or that uh, Mapbox Studio uses is a little different from the OSM to vector tiles tiles. Whenever you get OSM data, you have to give it a little rub down and do different stuff with it before it's ready. And they rub it down a, a little bit different ways. So if you're making something from scratch, you're probably better off using uh, Mapbox Studio and then massaging a little bit on the side to use your own tiles with. Now, I should probably just say that we've been talking about all this hosting your own vector tiles. The obvious question is, should you just let Mapbox host that stuff for you? The answer is probably. For a lot of use cases, you should. They're fairly reasonably priced. You let them worry about all the server-related stuff and keeping things going. For a lot of use cases, you're probably better off just using Mapbox's hosted stack. But if you're in government like me and you end up doing lots and lots of different maps and you need lots of different custom things and, and no two people are okay with the exact same set of data and, and so on. All the crap you have to do as a working GIS person. Hosting it yourself can make economic sense. So, but I would I would look at your needs and look at what Mapbox does first. You're, for a lot of use cases, you're better off letting them worry about all this kind of hosting stuff. 
But this is how you could style it yourself. This is how I'm doing basic. I've got four basic styles from Mapbox that I've tweaked for the OS7 Vector Tiles tiles. And those cover pretty much almost anything I'm going to need unless I need to add additional data for something else. So I'm probably not going to be making one of these by hand from the beginning, although I, I'd really love to see like the spaceport thing and the blueprint thing in Mapbox GL styles because I don't know what I'd use those for, but they're just so pretty. All right, that's styling vector tiles. I've linked all the stuff in the show notes. One extra thing, you should really look through the docs for OSM to vector tiles because they're just fantastic. But something in particular, I didn't realize till just right before this video, if you need a smaller subset of tiles, like you've got 10 gigs for the United States of America, but your DigitalOcean droplet only has five gigs free or what have you, and you don't need the whole United States, this tile live, uh, tile live copy, and note here, you're gonna need to install tile live and MB tiles globally to get this to work. You just do tile live copy and a set of bounds and the US or world or whatever MB tiles and where you wanna put it. And they're so tiny like uh, about a five county radius around Mecklenburg is under 100 megabytes and it extracts from the US file in about 10 seconds. And compare that to a raster tile that for just Mecklenburg County is like 11 gigs. That's just amazing. But look through, that's a really cool tool, but look through OSM to vector tile stocks anyway. They're just really good and informative. So that's vector tiles. I think we've beaten this horse to death. And these are all just ideas. This is a whole new frontier. And it's really like before these videos, I really didn't know the answers to the things I'm talking about. And it seems like before each one, I've had to build something to do things I was thinking about. So it's it's all kind of new stuff. And these are just ideas. These certainly aren't the only way to do these things. They're probably not even the best way. But hopefully this gets you thinking about vector tiles because this is where everything is headed. And the more you think about it now, the easier things are going to be down the road. Hope you enjoyed that. I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.